Hi, my name is David Skerritt from Skerritt Spas and Pools in Bristol, Connecticut. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, chlorine and bromine maintenance on your hot tub. These are the two traditional sanitizing methods uh, and we're going to go over those today. Behind me here, we have really our chemical package that we give people with a new spa if they're treating it uh, with chlorine or bromine. Um, we've got chlorine, we've got our balancers which are the pink top bottles, total alkalinity, pH minus, pH plus and some calcium harness. In the middle here we have a silver ion cartridge. This is only compatible with chlorine and not bromine. We have some stain and scale control, cover shield, anti-foam, and natural spa enzyme. And I'll talk a little bit about those in a minute. So you got your new spa and for the first two to three weeks, we're gonna want you to test the spa each time before you get in, just so that you can get a good gauge at what the water looks like how the spa smells, of course we want it to smell fresh, pretty much how the two correlate together when you're testing it. What we're going to use is we're going to use a, a, a four-way test strip here from BioGuard. This tests chlorine, bromine, total alkalinity, and pH. The one thing it doesn't test is calcium hardness, which is there is a five-way test strip available, but we don't happen to give that one with a chemical package. Prior to each use, you want to make sure that the water is crystal clear like you can read the writing off of a dime in the bottom. 99% of the time it's perfectly safe to go in in that condition. If the water is cl how, uh, cloudy or hazy at all, um, we're going to want to add chlorine until we have a residual and then it's okay to go in. But we can never go in to a spa that's cloudy and unsanitized, um, you're going to catch a rash. With chlorine or bromine what we're doing is we're, we're adding some sanitizer each time after we're done using it. You're going to put a half a teaspoon per 100 gallons and when you're done. This spa is 345 gallons. For this size spa, we're gonna treat it as 400. We always like to round up a little better off than kind of short change in the water. So on this size spa, that equates to two teaspoons each time after you're done. You're gonna run the jets, close the cover, and you scamper inside. If you're in there for a longer period of time, two people for 35 minutes, 45 minutes or more, or you have three or four people in there, really what we have to do is we have to do what's called a shock treatment, which we're adding one teaspoon per 100 gallons. Uh, and again, this is uh, the amounts for chlorine, and we're gonna run the jets. And really what this does is it sets the spa up for the next time you wanna use it. There are some special notes, like if there's a kid's birthday party, family gathering, where you have people in and out of the spa all day, you're gonna wanna keep a little package of these test strips in your pocket uh, when a group gets out, go back, retest it. If we've got a chlorine residual, they can go back in. If not, you're gonna add chlorine until we get a uh, two or three part per million residual of chlorine, and then the next set of people can get in. And that's pretty much what your, usage, your, your, your additions are based on your usage. The bromine additions I don't have written down, I don't remember them actually, but they, they're actually, the bromine additions are a little bit more. Bromine is a little more of a flexible sanitizer, works in a wide range of pH conditions, uh, but, uh, requires more um, to do the job than, than the granular chlorine does. So every time you're done using it with chlorine or bromine, you're putting some in after you're done. Beyond that, we have a once a week or you could go every two weeks treatment that you're gonna do. That's if you're using it regularly, once a month and every three to four months. So that weekly treatment is, you know, you pick a Sunday night when you're all done using the spa and we wanna do a shock treatment. Again, we're gonna put the four teaspoons in of uh, spa chlorine which is sodium dichlor when we shock we want to leave the cover half open for 10 or 15 minutes it allows everything to gas off uh, otherwise we trap it in the cover and then we're going to put a little bit of natural spa enzyme in i believe it's one ounce per 100 gallons a some stainless scale control that's just a couple of capsules if we're not using a silver ion cartridge we can use some water clarifier you know capful or so is fine monthly we want you to chemically clean the filter that's pulling the filter out, hosing it off, using off the shelf filter cleaner like this here. Uh, works great. Uh, you can also use a dishwasher, use soap. You just don't let it go through the dry heat cycle at the end. Um, that works great for cleaning the filters. Every third or fourth shock treatment, when we shock the water, you wanna take a clean rag or sponge and take the water right from the spa, which is sanitized, and splash that water up or just wipe the top sides above the water line in the underside of the cover. Uh, what that does is get sanitizer up there where normally there isn't, 
and it will kill any bacteria or early formations of mold or mildew uh, and, and that works great. Every three or four months we're going to change the water. Um, we're going to replace the silver ion cartridge uh, which is in the filter stand pipe or hangs near the filter. These last for four months. Then you bring a water sample in uh, to your local pool store which is us and uh, we test it and tell you what you need to do to balance the water. We can't use a previous water test that was done months ago. You gotta use the water that comes out of the tap because it can change as often as day to day. So that's our hot tub maintenance for chlorine or bromine. Thank you very much.